With over a million apps out there, not every one of them is worth your time or your money. But let's find out where excellence lies. What do we catch? And what do we release when we go hunting with an app trap? Hey everybody, Maction here, and today we're going to look at the game that Bill Gates called the new standard in interactive entertainment. That's right, The Seventh Guest. Released on CD-ROM in 1993, it got an Android port just last week. Now, I say Android port, but sadly, it's not actually been ported to Android, as it is so much that the seventh guest is being emulated on Android. Granted, through very official channels, but still emulated. And that brings with us some little problems, but, but we'll get to that. For those of you who are not already aware of what The Seventh Guest is, it is a point-and-click adventure game. Now, the point of it is to solve all of the puzzles and really find out more of the story as you go, as told in these little cutscenes. Now, I could call it a horror puzzle game, but it kind of just barely straddles that divide between slightly creepy in content and horror. Um, I doubt very much that most people are going to be scared by it, so I'll stick with point-and-click adventure game. I will say there are a couple points in time where this game falls flat on its face. They did a pretty good job of updating the control scheme so that it uses a touchscreen rather than a keyboard and a mouse. But sadly, there are some points in time where the precision could have been done a lot better. All in all, though, I muddled through somehow. Now, I got through the first several puzzles, and I will say that there are these really interesting blue screen scenes. What I mean is they had uh, actors acting on a blue screen. These days we usually see a green screen, but back then it was definitely blue. And uh, they were portraying these sort of cutscenes. Now, it is rather obvious when you're playing it, as I am, on an NVIDIA Shield tablet, a tablet that was built for gaming, that there are, um... Well, it's still acting as though it were reading it off of a CD-ROM, with all of the delays and all of the slowdown, and that's where the emulation problem comes into it, because it can't run it faster, no matter how powerful the device. And that is a good chunk of the reason why I decided to refund this game. And as if that wasn't bad enough, they also cut off the bottom of the screen as well as the subtitles. Now don't get me wrong, the story's alright, the puzzles are quite fiendish, and the music, well, the music can get repetitive because you're playing these various puzzles with no real intro, uh, with no real explanation, and uh, unless you are looking on the internet, which if you are, you are cheating, the rest of us had to call into a helpline run by Trilobite just to make sure that we could uh, get a little bit of a hint at 99 cents a minute. Ah, the struggle was real. For those of you who are playing it today, you can certainly check the solutions on the internet, and nothing's really been changed from the 1993 release. For both better and worse, of course. Is this game worth $5.99? Not for me. Maybe not for you. And I can see plenty of people for whom the nostalgia would be enough to make them overlook these issues, but not me. And unless you are burdened with the nostalgia of the 90s video game, I would say you should skip this one. Thank you so much for watching. I hope that you've enjoyed, and if you have, a comment or a like goes a long way. Clicking on any of the videos will take you to a corresponding playlist for conventions, reviews, tutorials, and even Android games. And be sure to be subscribed so that you will be notified of new videos as they come out. Thanks again, and I'll see you around.